friends, it's Mr. Walker here again. Thank you guys so much for uh, working with me in a previous lesson and letting me jump in here again today to do another math lesson with you guys. Mrs. Walker, uh, as you know, she's super awesome and preparing for all those uh, ceremonies and award ceremonies and things like that because of how awesome she is. So that's why I'm jumping in and doing a couple lessons here for her today. So in a previous lesson, you guys actually helped me out. You helped me uh, to to figure out how the order of things mattered, um, not only in math, but especially in, in getting dressed as well as I was trying to get my, my shirt and my jacket and my tie and all that kind of stuff. We realized that there's an order that we have to do things in order for um, for us to get the correct answer or for us to look look snazzy in our suits, right? So we learned about that in a previous lesson and we learned about parentheses and how parentheses can help us to determine what we need to do first. Like yesterday I was trying to put on that coat first and then put the shirt over top and then the tie and, and things were just getting out of hand. So if I had had those parentheses to tell me to put on the shirt and tie first and then the, the jacket, the coat jacket, that would have made a lot more sense, right? It would have helped me get to my uh, completed state first. So in, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at, again, how parentheses do matter and help us to group things, uh, but also how sometimes the order doesn't really matter too much. Now, I know that probably flips everything upside down, right, of, of what we previously learned, but we can use parentheses to kind of to help us um, make sense and make an order of things in, in a problem when we're trying to solve a problem. But we can also kind of in certain situations, move those parentheses around to help us out to make make things even easier um, and really kind of manipulate math a little bit. And we can use what we know about uh, properties of addition and properties of multiplication to help us to uh, to do those things and move things around and become flexible in our math. In our math. So it's kind of cool. We got a lot of exciting stuff to go over today. So you don't need too much. You just need something to write on, something to write with. Make sure you have that gathered up and that you're ready to follow along. Um, go ahead and click pause if you need to, to grab those things. And then uh, when you're ready, come on back, click play, and we'll keep moving. All right, guys, so I've got a couple problems up here that I, I want us to take a look at to, to start with here to kind of uh, refresh what we did in previous lessons and then connect it to what we're going to do today, okay? So as you can see, I have two problems up here, and the parentheses are, are grouped in different ways. We've got the same numbers, the same operations, but the parentheses are, are grouped around two different sets of numbers. So here we have 3 plus 2 times 5. So going out what we learned in the previous lesson, we know we're going to do the parentheses first, so we would do 3 plus 2 first and then multiply that by 5. In this one we have 3 plus 2 times 5, and 2 times 5, those are in the parentheses, so we would do that part first and then we would add the 3 to it, okay? So let's go through these real quick, let's solve these and see if we get the same answer or different answers depending on where that parentheses is. Okay, so on this side of things I have 3 plus 2, so if I did my 3 plus 2 first, right, because that's what the parentheses are saying, I would get 5, then I would have to do 5 times 5, right, we can even like keep that there if it helps us to keep, keep organized, and then 5 times 5 would give me 25, so that would be the answer to this one. If I come over here and I do these parentheses first, 2 times 5, well that's going to give me 10, 2 times 5 is going to give me 10, and then 10 plus 3 well, that's going to give me 13. So in this case, the parentheses do matter. Even though we have the same numbers, we have the same operations up there, the parentheses do matter. The placement of those parentheses matter as far as the answer that we're going to get. So we can get two completely different answers just depending on where those parentheses are placed. Okay, And that's evident here in the work that we did. So let's take a look at another example real quick. Again, we have the same numbers, a 7, a 6, and a 4, 7, 6, and 4. This time we have the same operation. We have addition, addition here and addition here. And that, but our parentheses are in different spots. Here they're grouped around the six and the four, and on the other side they're grouped around the seven and the six. So let's work through these two problems and see if we get the same answer. So here we would start in the parentheses with our six plus four. So six plus four, that would give me 10. Then we still have our seven plus out here. So seven plus, seven plus 10, well that would give me 17, okay? I come over to the other side, we have 7 plus 6, which would give me 13. And 13 plus 4, would you look at that, that would give us 17. So we get the same answer on both of these, even though our parentheses are in different spots. Think about that for a second. Why do you think that is, as compared to our last problem, right? as compared to our last example, why do you think there's a difference? What differences or similarities do you notice between these two problems? Pause the video for a second, think about that, and then let me know what you think. 
right, well, if we notice here, we're adding in both of these, right? Both of these have addition throughout, okay? In the other one, we had addition and multiplication, so it didn't work out that way when we moved the parentheses around. Here we're working with addition, and we know with addition, one of the properties of addition is we can add in any order, and we're gonna get the same answer. That holds true even in examples like this where we have parentheses, okay? Pretty cool. Let's take a look at one more example real quick. All right, guys, in this example, we have three numbers again, and again, we have the same operations. Here we're working with multiplication, right? We have multiplication throughout it. So we have three times two, three times two times four, and then we have three, times two times four. So again, those parentheses are grouped around different numbers there. So we have different multiplication sentences that we have to start out with. There are multiplication uh, problems that we have to start out with. So let's work this one through and see what we get. If we do three times two, well, it's gonna give me six. Three times two will give me six. And then six times four will give me 24. Okay, so this one works out to be 24. Let's go over here and see if the same thing happens. Now, what we know about multiplication is it should, right? Multiplication, just like addition, we can multiply in any order and we should still get the same answer. But let's see if it holds true just in case, okay? So here we have two times four. Two times four would give me eight. And eight times the three that I have left out here, eight times three or three times eight would give me 24. So I get the same answer. So it's pretty cool that the parentheses in these cases don't matter. Um, it doesn't matter too much where, what numbers they're grouped around as long as we're doing the same operation throughout. So as long as we're doing multiplication throughout, we could potentially put those parentheses wherever we'd like and we're going to get the same answer, right? Well, this is all well and good, right? It's probably what you think of yourself. Mr. Walker, yeah, it's great, but why does this matter? What are you, what are you telling us this for? And actually, that's where we're gonna get into the meat of today's lesson or of this lesson is that knowing that we can move those parentheses around can help us to make bigger, uh, more complicated multiplication problems a little bit easier to do, okay? So here's what I mean. We're gonna put up another example real quick and take a look at this one and uh, see how we can use what we know about moving those parentheses around to help us solve this problem a little bit easier. All right, let's say I was trying to solve a problem like this. 16 times three. 16 times three. Now right off the bat, I don't know about you, I can't count by 16s. I can't count 16 something something. I can't count by 16 three times. I'm not that smart. I mean, I'm smart, but I'm not smart enough to do that. And I don't really have the time to count by three 16 times. So I could do that. It's you know a perfectly reasonable strategy to use, but to me, that's kind of a waste of time. There's gotta be an easier way to do this, right? So let's, let's dive into this a little bit and think about how we can, we can solve this problem, how we can make things a little bit easier on ourselves, especially using what we know about parentheses in, in grouping multiplication around. So let's think about this number 16 for a second. Is there an easier way, or can we think of maybe factors that can make up the number 16? What do we know about the number 16? What are some factors that can make up the number 16? Pause the video, think about that for a second, press play when you're ready. All right, awesome. So I know if I did eight times two, eight times two, that would give me 16, right? And if I did, oh, four times four, right? Four times four would also give me 16. So these are like, these are factor pairs that I could use to help me kind of break down that number 16, make it a little bit easier to multiply. But I know no matter what pair I use, I'm also gonna have to multiply that by three. Right? I'm gonna have to multiply it by three to get my answer. So let's, let's take a look at this first one here, eight times two. We'll come back to the four times four in a second. So if I take a look at this eight times two here, right? I could think of it like this way, 16, I can uh, break it apart into that eight times two, and then eight times two times three, I should still get my same answer, right? But if I put my parentheses here, I'm doing eight times two, which gets me right back to 16, and then I have to do 16 times three. It's not really any easier. All I did was break down a number to have to put it back together. That's not gonna help me. So what else can I maybe do to make it easier? Uh, once I'm, I'm looking at the problem like this, what can I do with this problem? What can I do with those parentheses to maybe make it a little bit easier on me? Pause the video, think about that for a second, and then we'll, we'll talk about it. You're right, I can take those parentheses and I can move them around. Here's what I mean. Eight times two times three, still got the same problem here, but now I'm gonna move my parentheses around my two times three, because that one's a little bit easier to do. Two times three, that's gonna give me six, right? 
And now I just have 8 times 6, which, well, that's easy enough to do. 8 times 6 would be 48. Cool. So that made it a little bit easier. So I know that 16 times 3 is 48. 8 times 6 is 48. I took that 16. I broke it into an 8 and a 2. I thought of it as the factor pair of 8 times 2. 8 times 2 times 3, right? I moved my parentheses over to my 2 times 3. I got that number first, multiply it by 8, and I got 48. So what we're getting to here is that being able to move those parentheses around, especially when we're dealing with multiplication sentences, right? Multiplication, um, multiple multiplication problems. We can regroup those parentheses to make things a little bit easier, to look for those factor pairs that we can multiply easier and get, um, get to our answers in a more efficient way. All right. Just for the sake of things, let's take a look at this in terms of an array, because that's something that you guys have been learning about in previous lessons here. So, um, so let me get some of this stuff out of the way, and we'll, we'll kind of rewrite some things over here. So we started with 16 times 3, correct? We took that 16 and broke it into the factor pair of 8 times 2, but we still have to multiply that by 3. We moved our parentheses around to make things a little bit easier, because doing 8 times 2 again would put us right back in the same spot. So then we ended up with 8 times 6, which gave us the answer of 48. So let's take a look at an array and what an array looks like um, as far as what we're doing here with the parentheses and see if we can make that connection back to it and, and gain a further understanding of what's going on here. All right, so I drew an array here to represent that 16 three times. So we have 16 dots going across, 16 dots going across, and we did that three times. Again, that was kind of tedious. It took me a while to draw all those dots in there and then I would have to do that three times, right? But it would represent the 16 times three. To kind of show you guys like what, what we did and how we kind of broke things down a little bit is we took, we took those, those 16 dots three times and we, we kind of grouped them into two, two dots three times. Two, a group of two dots and we did it three times. But we did that for a total of Eight groups. So we did eight groups of two times three. Okay? And that helped us to just make a little more sense of it, just make it a little more easy, a little a little more feasible for us to do mentally. Well, I'm gonna leave this up here for a second and let's take a look at the other factor pair that we thought about, which was four times four. Right? I'm gonna write that one in white just so we see. So we thought we could break that sixteen into four times four times three. And again, four times four, if we did that, that would put us right back at 16 and we'd have to do 16 times three. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, kind of puts us right back where we start. What would happen though if we regrouped these guys a little bit or moved those parentheses around differently? I would end up with four times four times three. So that would mean that we would do four times three first, which would give us 12, and then we would have to do 12 times 4. What do you guys think? Is that any easier to do? No, that's still kind of tricky to do, right? So let me come in here. I'm going to grab a different color to kind of illustrate on the array what that would look like, okay? So we would have 4 in each group, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we'd be doing that 4 1, 2, 3 times. So there's another 4 3 times, 4 3 times, and 4 3 times. And then we would have those groups times four. So you can see we're working with like like bigger groups here, right? These groups of four three times, that's a bigger group. We're going to end up with bigger numbers in the end, and it's, it's going to be a little bit harder to multiply, okay? And again, grouping them this way, there's nothing wrong. If we did that, and we did our four times three first to get 12, and then we did 12 times four, we would still get to 48 as our answer. But those numbers are a little bit bigger, a little bit harder to work with, and you could use repeated addition or something else to get that answer. But again, it's probably not the most efficient, most effective way uh, uh, to get what you want. Okay, Let's just take a look at one more example. I promise I'll make it quick, and then we'll, uh, we'll kind of go from there. All right, so here we have 15 times 3. Some of you might be able to count by 15 three times. Some of you might be able to count by 3 15 times, and good for you. 
I can't. I need something a little bit easier, something to help me out with this one. So the way I see it, there's kind of like two different paths we can take here to get to get this uh, to figure out this multiplication problem. So we can break that 15 into a three and a five times three. Okay, three times five times three. And if I let's see, group these numbers up a little bit here. Uh, three times five. That's going to give us 15. 15 times 3, well, we're right back where we started, right? So that's not going to help. So we'll go ahead and go ahead and move these parentheses around and regroup them here. And I would get 3 times, and 5 times 3 is 15. Huh? I get the same thing, right? So wait a minute, this isn't really going to help us at all. Hmm, what can we do here? What am I missing? Take a minute, think about that, pause it, and then come back and we'll talk about it. Uh, okay, if we think about the factor pairs that make up the number 15, right? We get 3 and a 5, 3 times 5, or we get 1 and 15, but that's not going to help us in this situation. So I wrote 3 times 5 times 3, but if we think about it, knowing what we know about multiplication, I could also write it as 5 times 3 times 3, right? I could flip those around, doesn't matter the order, I'm still going to get to the same answer, right? And if I write it this way, if I move those factors around and then I use my parentheses, well, now all of a sudden this got a lot easier. 3 times 3, that's going to give us 9. 9 times 5, so 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 5, that's going to be 45. Okay, so that makes it a little bit easier when I regroup those fractions, when I move them, fractions, factors, let's try that again. Makes it a little bit easier when I move those factors around and then I move my parentheses to group the numbers in a way that makes the most sense and in a way that's the easiest for me to solve. Now, if you prefer or if you knew those other factors or, uh, or knew how to count by 15s off the top of your head, awesome. But this way is going to help you uh, make things more efficient and more effective as you go through and solve some problems. So hopefully this helps. Um, hopefully we learned not only how parentheses work again, we did a little bit of re reviewing with that, but also how in situations where our operations are all the same, like we have all multiplication, we can move those parentheses around to make the overall problem easier for us to solve. Um, as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please reach out to me, reach out to Ms. Walker, reach out to whoever, let us know, we're here to help. Um, and I appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks guys.